God bless you on today. Today I'm just going to basically read some scriptures on healing. God's best for you, for me, is for us to walk in divine health. Remember Jesus said in St. John 6, 63, these words that I speak are spirit and they are life. So when you speak the word of God into the, your situation upon your body or a loved one or a friend or even someone you may have just met that's going through an illness or an afflicting situation, you can speak God's word over that individual or into the situation and God's word is alive, active, powerful, effective, fruitful and productive it will bring results of divine health. Proverbs 18 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, My word shall not go out and come back void, but will accomplish and prosper where it has been sent or assigned. Proverbs 4 talks about the Word of God is medicine. It brings healing to the body. And if you read the stories of Jesus, there were times where someone would say, don't even come to my house, just speak the Word only and my servant shall be healed. So Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we declare that your blood has sealed a covenant of healing for our spirits, our minds, our bodies, and our souls. We rebuke all sickness, affliction, pain, and dis-ease. We command it to die at the seed and at the root. And we command the healing power of God to come upon us, to overtake us, to drive out toxic things out of our minds, our spirit, and especially our bodies. And for us to walk in divine health, according to Proverbs, chapter 4 in Psalms 103 which says God will renew our strength or health like that of an eagle. Psalms 91 talks about not being afraid of affliction and disease because God is a deliverer. Now I'm going to read some scriptures right here starting with Exodus 15 and 26. That's Exodus 15 and 26 the NIV version. If you listen carefully to the Lord your God and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, in other words, his word, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. In the Hebrew, it would read, I am Jehovah Rapha. Now it says bring on, but when certain things get out of balance, sickness and disease can come. Exodus 23 and 25 through 26, New King James Version, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer much carriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I want you to Play this video over and over and repeat these words. Psalms 103, verses 2 and 3, New King James Version. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Anything in the body that's causing you to be uneasy. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Amplified Version. Surely Jesus has borne our griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses. That's the mind. Worry, anxiety, and carried our sorrows. That's the heavy spirit or soul. And pains of punishment. And with his stripes, we are healed and made whole. The Hebrew word for nothing missing, nothing broken. Being made whole, beloved, is shalom, shalom. 1 Peter 2 and 24, New King James Version. 
who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Psalms 107, verse 20, New King James Version. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destruction. Proverbs 4, verses 20 to 23, New King James Version. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart or your spirit with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. And let me just interject concerning this verse, when it says, guard your heart, your spirit. Make sure you pay close attention to what you see, what you hear, who you allow to speak certain things in your atmosphere. If it's negative and you can't avoid it, when you walk away or while they're talking, plead the blood of Jesus under your breath. Plead a scripture or decree a scripture under your breath. And if you have to leave their presence, then you can say, I rebuke those words in the name of Jesus. I nullify those words in the name of Jesus. They have no effect on me. Speaking is important. James chapter 5 verses 14 to 15. New King James Version. Is any among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him or her, anointing him or her with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he or she has committed sins, he or she will be forgiven. Isaiah 36, 16, 38, 16 rather, Amplified Version. O Lord, by these things men live, and in all these is the life of my spirit. Restore me to health and let me live. Psalms 118, verse 17. NIV version, New International Version. I will not die but live and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Acts 19 and 11. God did extraordinary miracles through the hands of Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick. And the diseased and evil spirits left them. Women the woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, verse 27. When the woman heard about Jesus, she came up through the crowd behind him, touched his cloak, for she kept saying, pay attention, she kept saying, if I only touch his garment, she kept saying it until she got to Jesus, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped, and she sensed in her body that she was healed of her affliction. Now this woman had been bleeding for 12 years. Her menstrual cycle was out of balance. But Jesus healed her because of her faith. You can have faith in God, and we can have faith for other people who are not saved or may not have faith for healing. We can stand in proxy for them. Verse 30 of Mark 5, At once Jesus was aware that power had gone out from him, turning to the crowd, Jesus asked, who touched my garment? So he felt power coming out of him. I want to go to Matthew chapter 8, and there's several instances of healing in Matthew chapter 8. Verse 1, when Jesus came down from the hill, large crowds followed him. Then a man suffering from a dreaded skin disease came to Jesus, knelt down before him and said, Sir, if you want to, you can make me clean. And beloved, God wants us all well. Jesus reached out and touched him. At once the man was healed because Jesus said, be clean. Now we're going to go down to the eighth, no, that's the fifth verse of the same chapter. 
When Jesus entered Capernaum, a Roman officer met him and begged for help. Sir, my servant is sick in bed at home, unable to move and suffering terribly. I will go and make him well, Jesus said. Verse 8, Oh no, sir, answered the officer. I do not deserve to have you to come into my home. Just give the order and my servant will get well. I too am a man under the authority of superior officers, and I have soldiers under me. I order that one come, and he comes. And I order my slave do this, and he does it. So then Jesus marvels and said, look at the faith of this Italian man. He's not even in blood covenant with the Father yet. Yet he understands speaking the word by those who have authority brings results. So what happens? When Jesus heard this, he was surprised and said to the people following him, I tell you, I've never found anything like this in Israel. No faith like this. Then Jesus said to the officer in verse 13, Go home and what you believe will be done. And the officer's servant was healed that very moment. Immediately. Beloved, even if you still feel something in your body, after you have confessed God's word, you confess by his stripes, I'm healed. Or just say, I'm healed. Thank you, Father, I'm healed. I did it with my left hip. I had to put ointment on it, heat treatment and all of that, because it was a lot of pain. Every time I would feel a pain, I wouldn't say out. I would say, I'm healed. In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. Ooh, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. Boom, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. And now I have no problem with that left hip. No pain at all. It took a while. It may take a while, but continue to believe and confess God's word, and God can do it instantly. He can give you an instant miracle because he's that powerful. Mark, uh, Matthew rather, 8, verse 14. When Jesus went to Peter's home, and there he saw Peter's mother-in-law sick in bed with a fever, he touched her hand, the fever left her, she got up and began to wait on him. So immediately she was made whole. Verse 16 of Matthew 8. When evening came, people brought to Jesus many who had demons in them. Jesus drove out the evil spirits with a word. Jesus drove out the spirits with a word. You and I can drive out healing, pain, and affliction with our words. Faith-filled words because of the power of the Holy Ghost. And it says he healed all who were sick. And then it says it confirmed the saying of Isaiah. 53 about by his stripes we are healed if you go down to verse 28 when jesus came to the territory of gadara on the other side of the lake he was met by two men who were demon possessed they spoke and jesus cast them out into the swine Matthew 9 and 1, Jesus got into the boat and went back across the lake to his own town where some people brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a bed. Jesus said to the paralyzed man, be encouraged, my son, your sins are forgiven. The other people got an attitude, but down in verse, I believe it's 5 or 6, it says, so he said to the paralyzed man, Get up, pick up your bed, and go home. Verse 7, a man got up and went home. When the people saw it, they were afraid and praised God for giving such authority to men. You and I have been given the authority of Jesus Christ to speak the word against sickness, demon possession, worry, fear, anxiety, high, low, high and low, blood pressure, anything. St. John 11 and 4, when Jesus heard this, dealing with laughter, he said this sickness will not end in death. You can speak that too. No, it is for the glory of God that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. 
Jesus told Lazarus' family, this sickness of Lazarus will not end up in death, but it is for the glory of God to be revealed. The glory of God to be revealed in your situation. The glory of God will be revealed right now with your mind, your spirit, your soul, getting your blood pressure back in order, getting your whole body back in order, your digestive system, your brain, your cardiovascular system, your respiratory system, your indoctrine system, your nervous system, your musculoskeletal system, your muscles in your tendons, your bones, back in order for the glory of God shines upon it right now. Verse 25 of John 11, Jesus is saying to you, I am your resurrection and your life. If you believe in me, you will live. Verse 40, did not I tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? Verse 41, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I say this for the benefit of the people standing here. Your healing is not just for you. It's for a testimony to encourage someone else to believe God. Verse 43, after Jesus had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. Verse 44, the man who had been dead came out with his hands and feet bound in strips of linen, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. Unwrap him and let him go, Jesus told them. You can speak to that affliction. Get off of me. Stop tormenting me. My mind is not a candidate for you, Satan. My body is not a candidate for sickness. I command sickness to die in Jesus' name. Revelation 22 and 1. Then the angel showed me a river of water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the main street of the city, on either side of the river, stood a tree of life, bearing 12 kinds of fruit and yielding a fresh crop for each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Verse three, no longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the lamb will be within the city and his servant shall worship him. You can get healed just by praising God. I shared testimonies in the past about how we were in New Bern, North Carolina. A gentleman who was a deacon was on crutches. He was sitting down in the deacon section. Pastor Pulley was preaching like a house on fire. And I believe he may have pointed over to the man or looked over there or something. But all of a sudden, this man just got up because the glory of God was so powerful and started pacing back and forth across the altar. The church went wild because they all knew the deacon and the visitors that saw it already saw the crutches. The Holy Ghost made his own altar call. People were being slain in the Holy Ghost. Demon possessed people were getting set free. Other people were getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Some people rededicated their lives back to God. Pastor Pulley was so frightened, he ran back in the back. I can recall the story of Virgil Baker, Troy Bryant's mother from Ashman Street. We went out, soul winning with a team, talked with her, prayed with her, and we were holding hands. She let go of the circle of hands and started touching her toes and bending down. I did not understand it. I was asking God underneath my breath, what's happening here? I don't understand. Then she spoke these words, and I'll never forget it. God bless you, Virgil. God bless you, Brother Troy, and your family. She said, Father God, I thank you for healing me of spinal meningitis. She kept saying that over and over. And during that time, there was a newspaper that was all born again, uh, believer run we gave that story to them I believe it called the sword of something and they put it in there and 
You can ask Virgil today about that testimony. So I want you to repeat these scriptures to yourself and speak the word of God over yourself or over a loved one. You can also use 1 Peter 2 and 24. By his stripes, you were healed, meaning you are healed. When you thank God for your healing, when you thank God for your deliverance, say, Father God, I thank you that it's done. I'm going to read some prayers and decrements out of a very good book called Thunder Prayer That Provokes Angelic Violence Against Works of Darkness. The gentleman's name is T-E-L-L-A. Last name is O-L-A-Y-E-R-I. And he's also the author of Fire, Fire. The name of the book is Thunder Prayer That Provokes Angelic Violence Against Works of Darkness. The author's name again is Tela Oleira. T is in Tom. E-L-L-A. Last name Ozen Owl. L-A-Y-E-R-I. You can repeat these as well. Every curse that leads to sickness, break and backfire in the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, release me from every curse of infirmity in the name of Jesus. By the power in the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, I am healed in the name of Jesus. I soak my destiny in the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, Kill poison in my body in the name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, cleanse and erase traces of bad health in my body in the name of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus, that's communion, and I am healed in the name of Jesus. Here's another one. Blood of Jesus, flow in my veins. Neutralize and kill every contrary deposit in my body. Here's more. Holy Ghost, scrub filth in my body and make me whole in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, halt and paralyze powers advancing towards me or my loved ones or the stranger that you just met and cause this thing to do me no evil in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, guard me as anti-infirmity soldier and silence the enemy of my soul in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, let your mighty healing power flow in every area of my life in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost divine, give me love and peace that passes all understanding. In the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, my Father, expose slow killers in my family and stop them completely in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, arise. Let slow killers assigned to attack my health be put to shame, cease from functioning at the seed and at the root. In the name of Jesus. O oh Lord, let all handwriting of darkness against my health be nullified, void, inactive, non-productive, and unfruitful in the name of Jesus. Jesus, replace every organ that needs repairing in my body. Power of Holy Ghost resurrection, come upon me with boiling anger and heal my children in the name of Jesus or yourself. O oh Lord, let your power of healing come upon me now in the name of Jesus. Holy Ghost, uproot every plantation of infirmity in my body in Jesus' name. Agony of sickness that killed my parents and grandparents. My life is not your candidate. Expire and burn to ashes in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, break the mouth of powers that want to swallow me like the grave in Jesus' name. Arrow of stagnancy fired against my life backfire 
in the name of Jesus. Arrow of ultimate death fired against me. My life is not your portion. Backfire to your sender in the name of Jesus. Dr. Jesus, come to my life. Thank you for healing me. I rebuke sickness and disease. I command it to scatter and die at the seed and at the root in Jesus' name. Every covenant with sickness and disease be destroyed and break by the fire of God in Jesus' name. Powers assigned to waste my life die in the name of Jesus. So you can confess these. And we want to say, Father God, we thank you that Jesus is the master healer, the healer of healers, the doctor of doctors. Father God, we thank you for Jesus, the great physician, the omnipotent one, the omnipresent one, the omnipresent science one. Heavenly Father, I thank you that Dr. Jesus has healed me and that you help me to keep all sin doors closed so that sicknesses do not return. Father God, I praise you for giving me divine health to my body, my spirit, my soul. And Father, I thank you that I nullify all spells and jinxes against me. And I release your healing glory. I release your completeness. I release shalom, shalom to myself, my children, my loved ones, my neighbors, my co-workers, my aunts and uncles. We release the healing power of Jesus Christ. We release the fire of the Holy Ghost to bring deliverance to those who are oppressed, depressed, suppressed, regressed, possessed. We command the fire and the glory of God to bring resurrection power in life to dead bones, dead bodies, dead cells. We speak life to the neurological system, the optical system, the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, the blood and circulatory system, the indoctrine system, the nervous system, the muscle, skin, and skeletal structure and system to the whole body, to the spirit, to the mind, to the soul. We thank you, Father God, right now. And for those of you that are home, or when you get home, if you're listening to this uh, through another means, take communion. Beloved, Jesus said in the Gospels and in 1 Corinthians 11, do this as often as you think about me and the blood covenant. You don't have to wait for someone to give you communion. Take some grape juice or some dinner wine, a cracker. If you don't have a cracker, get some bread. If you don't have that, use water. As You can just do it and you say, Father God, I'm coming to you. I'm sealing this and decreeing your covenant for wholeness in my life. Cover every area, Holy Ghost. I decree that you are my Savior, my Deliverer, my Healer. I am delivered. I'm healed. Or you can say something similar to that. You said, take the cup, which represents your blood, and drink it. Take the cracker, which represents his body, and eat it. And afterwards, thank God in the mighty name of Jesus for wholeness. I speak life to you. I speak the resurrection power of God to you. I command divine health to you. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Shalom, shalom. Again, you don't have to wait to go to a service to do communion. This is why a lot of people are infirm. And if you have unforgiveness against anyone, I've been there. Sometimes it's tough to let things go. Ask God not only to remove it out of your heart, but to renew a new and right spirit 
within you. He can help you to do it. I had to do it more than once. He's waiting for you to come to him. Reach out to God in the name of Jesus and let him bless you to be made whole so that you can testify and be a blessing to someone else. God bless you. Play this video over and over. Get the book. Again, it's called Thunder Prayers that provokes, I don't know if you can see it, right here, against the works of darkness, and the author's name is right there. T-E-L-L-A-O-L-A-R-E-R-I. Order it from Amazon. It's less than $10, and it will do you well. It has things on deliverance. Uh, this guy, let me just say, this brother's from Africa. Anytime you get a believer that's dedicated in Africa, their prayers, not knocking Americans, their prayers are very powerful because over there, they experience a different level of demonic forces so that God pours out greater anointings of the Holy Ghost. That's this brother here. He is from Africa. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Be a blessing to somebody. Pray for somebody on your job or in your family and speak life to your situation. I have to add this. Watch out for discouragement, fear, and complaining. I often check my camp and tell everyone you have to rephrase, you need to rephrase those words. Slow down your thoughts, your mind, so you can watch your mouth and your emotions. Speak only what's in line with God's word. God bless you. Bye-bye.